Hi, I'm Andreas, and welcome to Intrapreneur Stories, where we want to gather the experiences and key learnings from entrepreneurs in order to help other entrepreneurs in the future. I'm here at Vanuke with no one else than Stan van Avermaat, our first entrepreneur. Hi, Stan. Hi, Andreas. Thank you for having us here. Thanks for the introduction. Yeah. No one else then. Huh? Yeah, so um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's start. I think a lot of people uh, haven't heard of uh, Van Hooke maybe yet, huh? but this is a good way to change it. Well, the, the fact that people don't know Van Hooke is probably because we are inside of the cabinets. We are, we are a supplier for the kitchen and the furniture industry. And basically, we are always on the inside of, of, uh, of the kitchen. If you think about the wood in the kitchen, if you let it go, then we, that's where we come in. We have the functional components in the kitchen. That's, that's our speciality. So like hinges, like uh, box systems, so the drawer systems, and the lift systems for the upper cabinets. So think the wood away, and that's where we come in. OK, so it, it goes beyond the aesthetics. It's more the mechanics. Uh, exactly, very functional, only the functional part, very focused on the functional part. And so you got thrown into this new world of intrapreneurship. Um, I don't know how much of an entrepreneur you were already before that or what your general background was um, overall in professional career uh, academically are there certain skills that you say okay this is probably the reason why i chose or became the entrepreneur uh, for the project that is now upcoming i think um, you're not born as an entrepreneur i think you need to have uh, how you say enthusiasm we say in flemish we say hoosting you really need the body and you really need the enthusiasm to to, to getting things done and that that's basically what what what, an, what makes you an entrepreneur and i think um everybody can be an entrepreneur if that's if that's uh, an answer to your question and uh, it's not like i was i give i was given the stamp entre this is an entrepreneur yes or no but i think you need just the the power and the hands-on mentality and the enthusiasm to become an entrepreneur so it's not like you're entitled to be an entrepreneur you just you just do it it's work it's hard yeah, work. Just yeah, do yeah, it yeah. because I think uh, if you see this building, if you if you have a look in this building, uh, it actually breeds entrepreneurship. Eh? Uh, the company was founded like 50 years ago by uh, one of the biggest entrepreneurs I've ever met personally, uh, Luc van Hooke, who founded the company all by himself. Um, and it is it's led uh, currently by the second generation uh, of the family, which is Peter. And also Peter is like the the one the full body entrepreneur, if you want. Um, he breeds it, uh, he constantly thinks about uh, changing business models, changing himself, changing other people and he actually stimulates uh, the, the team leader but also other stakeholders in the company to be an entrepreneur, to be an entrepreneur and to, uh, yeah, to drastically think forward and uh, reinvent ourselves. So that's not really a question, that's just a, a matter of being here in the company. If I understand it correctly, basically everyone in the company with a good idea can walk up to Peter, Peter's door and then just say, let's have a look at this possibility. Definitely. And if you come in the morning, you have a big chance that you might make it in the, in the end. Yeah. <laughs> With a coffee, I assume. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, what I understand, uh, also uh, walking through the company already, you see Orga, um, Van Hooke is basically a house of brands. We have several brands here. You are the sole importer of Bloom within Belgium. Um, but then you have the product Orgelux, which all of a sudden gets a new, whole new direction. What, what was the, 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 the main setting for, for this entity to become a separate company? Orgelux was founded like 15 years ago. It was founded by uh, some entrepreneurs in the company. So the early adopters were, uh, were basically launching the Orgelux brand as an inner dividing system for the, the Bloom box systems, for the Bloom drawers. And that was it. And we uh, sold, and we're still selling, uh, of course, Orgalux as an inner dividing system through our B2B channel. So if the kitchen manufacturer wants to have the inner dividing systems, he can sell it alongside the, the, the total kitchen concept, let's say. Um, but like one year ago, we decided there was a need uh, for the end customer to have the uh, inner dividing system in the kitchen if it was not sold by the kitchen manufacturer. Huh? So we, we decided to to have a look at the B2C uh, segment where we can actually uh, sell these uh, inner dividing systems through uh, an online channel. Because uh, we felt when we were at the fair, when people were in our showroom, we felt really the enthusiasm for people to organize their kitchen. Because I, I, yeah, I can imagine a lot of people do tend to have uh, unorganized kitchens. This is a whole new, new market uh, setting. So 
taking this outside the company walls, do you already feel that there are some structural changes coming in the company? People that are feeling this, this wind of change coming um, and, and how does it affect uh, the employees at, at Van Hooken at this point? So Orgelux was, uh, basically we, we call it a speedboat. Eh? So you have the mothership, which is Van Hooken, which is the B2B company, which is in the Benelux, quite a quite dominant player, let's say. But for Orgelux, we are in a B2C, big ocean, and, and we're very unknown as a brand. And um, we decided to, to, ha to give it a little bit of a speedboat approach, where the, the, the mothership is slowly trying to turn uh, like this, and the speedboat is very uh, uh, flexible, let's say, very agile. dynamic, uh, very yes. agile. And, and I think we need this if we want to enter a B2C market, which we don't know. We are, we are a full B2B company for 50 years. We have been a very dominant B2B company. But if you really want to go into the B2C market, that's a totally different approach. Um, and to reply to your question, I think the, the, the most of the people here are all consumers. They're all human, of course. But at the end of the day, they're really like in a B2B focus. So if, you, we, we want, if we want to go ahead in the B2C market, we need a different kind of approach. And we need to stimulate our own employees to uh, become part of this uh, B2C brand as well. And, and how do you feel uh, or how is this currently uh, taking its course? Do you see um, maybe taking in external people? Uh, is, is this one of the options or how do you feel that the growth hack in, in terms of learning the B2C mindset um, will be apprehended within Van Hooken? Or, or Helux for that matter. Well, first of all, we have we have some we have quite some people who are very enthusiastic to start with this brand because it's it's a fun brand, you know. It's very it's a, we call it a female brand, but it's a very fun brand. It it organizes your life, it organizes your kitchen. It's really like fun to sell. It's an accessory brand, and everybody likes accessories. In the Is it because day, right? uh, females are <laughs> more? organized than, uh, than the men or <laughs> I wouldn't say that I know v some very organized men as well but uh, but I, I just mean it's it's not a technical brand it's a very it's, it's really like a fun product so we have some uh, kind uh, quite some enthusiasts in the company are really very eager to start marketing the brand in a, in a totally different way as we did before in the last 15 years but then we need help eh? so this is uh, again when you guys come in so we need help from the outside how to market this product also how to digitally market this product because we have a we have a very dominant web shop in the company but it's strictly b2b so you cannot just copy and paste this web shop and uh, put it into a b2c market so we need the experience from the outside um, and then we have the enthusiasts on the insides uh, and i think this these two these two uh, yeah are mixed together and it gives you a perfect cocktail of people who are really very much into the the idea yeah so looking at um, the mothership, uh, Van Hooken, you launch a new vehicle, a new uh, speedboat into a whole new direction, uh, into the B2C market. Of course, uh, you're looking at outside experience to, 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 to get a growth hack into the B2C world, but there must be some assets that, leveraged, uh, that, that can be leveraged from the, the corporate mothership. That's a good question. I, I would immediately say in terms of resources, we have the resource in the mothership. As I said, they're very enthusiastic to start with the brand and start marketing the brand in a totally different way. But on the other hand, those resources are already fully booked, let's say. So we cannot just say, okay, you need to do this in your spare time and uh, in the evening you can uh, market Orgelix a bit and in the rest of the day your current business uh, stays the same. So I think um, this is one of the, the biggest um, pitfalls which company have that they say, People will do it um, between four and six in the evening. They will market the new brand. That's okay. So this is one of the one of the things we learned that we need a speedboat for, eh? that, that we need people to ignite this and to actually do this. Uh, when it comes to helping the speedboat as a mothership, I think we need the we need uh, the investment, the marketing investment of launching a new web shop. We can, uh, we can uh, work out a web shop in three days, but we need to do it in a thorough way because we want to be there for the next 15 years with this new brand, right? Of course. So we really need to think about how to create a web shop, what needs to be in there. We have like 9,200 SKUs in Orgelux. So we really need to look at how many SKUs do we need at the end of the day. Uh, we, we cannot just uh, throw 9,200 SKUs online and, and think people will buy this. So we really need to think about um, how how would people react if we put two online? Is that is that is that uh, yeah according to their needs, etc. And one of the one of the other things is we have the experience in the functional uh, fittings. 
so it means we have the experience in the box systems and we, have, we are producing uh, uh, approximately 15,000 uh, box systems a week uh, at Van Hoeken. So we, we know the box system, we know the exact dimensions of the box system. So as a mothership, we know where the boxes are going and we know the exact dimensions. The operational excellence is there already to... to yeah, so to we know these way. dimensions, so it means we can actually perfect fit the inner dividing systems into your box in your kitchen, because we know your, the size of your, of your box. Now, of course, I think the main and most interesting question that I, I'm, I'm eager to hear from you um, or hear your answer for is to see you are an entrepreneur now. You have brought this uh, new entity to life. If you had to do it all over again, uh, I send you back into time and you know what you know now, what would you have done differently? What, what were your main key learnings in this process? Um, maybe. Uh, what would you have uh, bypassed in, uh, or done differently? In the design thinking environment, I think we will never, things will never be the same again in this company because first think and then act is really something we learned. If you ask me what, what I should do different, and I know one of, the, one of our product designers is Kevin, which actually uh, got uh, introduced, bundled to the, in the design thinking methodology into the company. He uh, once told that availability is not a competence. So I think that this is one of the learnings we have. That, that means that if you want to involve people into the sprint, into the, the methodology which you use, so if you want to involve people from our uh, company on the inside of the company, then they need to be available. Uh, uh, so it means you don't pick on availability, you pick on competence, right? Uh, and if you, uh, if you pick on competence, you are quickly entering uh, the same people um, all over again and you think, okay, this, this guy uh, is very good at this, so we, we, we gather a team, and bec but basically you always think you need the same power team to get things done and that's not the case. You really need to focus on what do I exactly need in this part of the sprint and who's the best in class for this and not because the people are available, let's say, that they are the best in class. So uh, you really need to think very thoroughly on who you want to have in this power team over and over again in every phase of the project. And was this a, a learning by doing? Was this something that, uh, that was an issue at some point? Yeah, definitely, because at some points we found out that, okay, maybe not, they're not the right people in the room. So they're all nice people, we all love them, let's say. They are entrepreneurs as such. But maybe we need more information from the market, we need more information from the customer service department. Maybe we need more uh, information on controlling, on, uh, on the financials, etc. So really the, the power team who needs, uh, where we need the exact input from, it's really very important to think about this very thoroughly who you want in this. Um, and the other thing uh, maybe which uh, I've learned is that uh, it's not because you work with an uh, outside company like you guys or other companies that there's no more work to do at the inside of the company. So this is one also one thing I learned. Somebody needs to pick up what are the main conclusions and uh, on the way people need to pick up the project as well on the inside. So it's not like you sit back and enjoy the ride and, uh, the, uh, and the outside companies will do the rest. That, that doesn't work. You still need people on the inside who actually are still on top of the project, of course. coaching the project and a follow up. And I kindly uh, underestimated this part as well because we think, okay, the outside companies will do this for us. But at the end of the day, you need st still need. With insights. entrepreneurship comes great responsibilities, as exactly, <laughs> you could yeah, say. Yeah. Um, you as an entrepreneur, you might have um, questions unanswered or maybe uh, things that you want to ask peers uh, who are facing other industries, similar problems. Is there anything that maybe you want to ask to our next entrepreneur that uh, we are going to interview? I think we're, we're still in the middle of, of trying out s several things, but if, if, I, if there's one question which I still, uh, which is still a little bit unanswered, but I know I don't know if there's a correct answer to that. I think, as I said before, the people in the in the power team are crucial. So uh, if um, if somebody else, li like another entrepreneur in another company, um, has the same challenges, think very thoroughly ob about who you want in the team, and if you have a way of um, hiring people into this power team, how can you find those, those people in the company, which are all, they're all there, but you can, they're not visible all the time. So if you can find a way how to, to get people into the project, which really makes sense in the, at a certain time, 
I think that's uh, the star pupils of the company. How to detect them? Yeah, how to, how to find them? them. Yeah. Maybe like hiring people, uh, but on the inside of the company. And if you can find a tool there, that, that would be great. Uh, we look very much forward to uh, seeing what's going to happen with Orialux. Um, and of course, uh, we'll still be there um, with other help. And your question will be taken on by the next entrepreneur uh, in a couple of weeks. Thank you again for having us. And we're looking forward to seeing you again. Me too, my pleasure. Bye. Thank you for being with us today. This video was brought to you by Bundle, the venture development studio. If you're interested in more entrepreneur stories like this, then I'm happy to announce that our next interviewee will be no one less than Peter de Wolf, one of the first entrepreneurs at Bpost. Now, we'll be launching new episodes every two weeks on Monday from now, so check out our YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, put it in your agenda, check out entrepreneur stories on your favorite podcast platform, and make sure to leave your questions for the entrepreneurs in the comment section below. We're looking forward to answering them and looking forward to seeing you again. Take care.